we're going to talk about dealing with voice to skull. Um, in this segment, we're going to just cover what it is. And then in the next um, part, we're going to just look at why it's, it's effective. Um, and the psychology and some of the tactics that the perpetrators are using to sort of carry out the most effective attacks. And then finally, we're going to look at some tips as to how, as a victim, you can counteract or sort of handle and deal and manage voice to skull. Um, the story for most people is that they start off by hearing voices and sounds, uh, but they know 100%, they're definitely sure that they're not crazy. So they, they know that they don't have a mental illness such as schizophrenia or bipolar. It's not only voices that they start hearing or sounds, but it's um, also there, there are a whole lot of funny events that begin to happen, uh, maybe at work, suddenly co-workers just maybe start ganging up on you and that's normally known as workplace mobbing where for some reason not only colleagues but the public is also acting in a rude way um, for instance when you go to the shop for some reason a complete stranger or a cashier or whoever doesn't appear to be acting in a normal way the other thing that begins to happen when you start hearing voices it's that you might start experiencing some physical conditions such as fatigue, stress, depression. Um, so it's really a combination of not just hearing strange sounds, but it's, it's, it's just your whole life begins to change in some, in some way. Um, the thing to note about these voices and sounds is that they, they, they go on for 24 hours a day, um, which is a characteristic of schizophrenia. Um, it's not just voices, but the sounds are also very natural. They, it doesn't seem like random voices, so it, it might sound like somebody who's next door, or it might sound like something that you might hear in real life. Um, but what these voices are actually saying, they, they come across as knowledgeable, like they know everything that's happening in your life. They would say stuff about who your friends are, they would uh, talk about where you work, they would talk about the car that you drive, your ID number, so they would come across as though they know you in and out. Um, the other thing is that they're usually male and female, and for some reason, whatever that, that you try, whatever method, whatever it is that you try and do, you can't shut these voices down, you can't stop them, they just keep on going on and on and on. And what most victims begin to think when all of this is happening is they know that somehow they're being spied on for some reason because the voices are commenting on everything that they're doing. Um, so they begin to assume that it's a hidden camera, for one. Um, this is all just a tactic that, that these perpetrators are using. They're trying to mislead you into thinking that there's some kind of actual hidden cameras planted somewhere in your house. Because everywhere that you go, they, they, they're almost like giving you a live commentary. Sometimes they also, um, if you're a very spiritual person, they would, they would come to you in your prayer and, and make it seem as though they're God or there's some kind of spiritual power or or like you, you're, you're a special person, or this is somehow very spiritual, because it's not a normal thing to happen. And also they might, maybe they might even lie and say that this is some form of telepathy. The good thing is that you're not crazy. Um, there are a whole lot of other people to, to whom this is happening. And there's, you don't need to panic, you don't need to sort of take medication. I mean, you could always give it a try, but you will will notice that even if you do go to therapy sessions or whatever, it doesn't seem to work. The, the voices are not going away. So it's probably advisable to not take medication for no reason or to get yourself drugged up. It is voice to skull. Um, that's what this whole thing is known. If, if you're hearing voices, plus now there's a whole lot of other strange events happening and you know that you're not crazy, so chances are that it's voice to skull. Now, I know this, this is not a cool name and it's probably the single most important reason why most victims don't trust this sort of diagnosis because it's not as common as schizophrenia um, it's not as common as having bipolar so most of them do do their research and they go online and find they, they come up to blogs that say voice to skull and they and they go no this doesn't sound trustworthy um, what it's also known as it's it's usually abbreviated as v2k uh, also known as artificial telepathy, just for that reason that it's it's, it's not there's no real telepathy happening, um, or it's not anything spiritual. It's not a voice of God. It's it's not something spiritual. It's an actual group of people known as perpetrators 
that are deliberately beaming these voices into your head or your skull. So then what is it? It is a technology. It's If it's not spiritual, it's not you're not crazy, it's not spiritual, it's nothing fancy. It's, it's a, it's a well-known technology that's been used from the 1960s. I, I think it was in the military at first. Um, it's a technology that's been used as a weapon. Uh, typically, I mean, basically to just project sounds in, inside of your head. Um, there is a good chance that if this is happening that there's been some kind of nanochip implant. This chip is probably a, the size of a, of a very small, less than the size of a grain of, of rice. Um, it all works because our brains have got a natural electromagnetic field. So you could, it's very similar to how a radio works. Um, but all there is to, to how a radio works is just transmitting waves, as long as, as, a, as there's a receiver on the other side. Um, those waves are then demodulated back into actual sounds. Um, so our brains are also the same. They, our thinking has also got, got some kind of natural thinking pattern or natural wave happening to them. So. The voice to skull story is is slightly more unbelievable. It's slightly, it's a lot more difficult to believe that uh, because it's deliberately being kept a secret. But a lot of us are familiar with RFID, which is where you you take a chip, you would implant it inside of a pet or a child in case they get lost, so that you can track them down and you can know exactly where they are. So the principle is the same. There's a a, a small chip which you can't really feel or you can't really experience or you can't. It's not a, it's not really invasive. Um, but that chip is implant, implanted inside of a, of, a, of a living an animal or a person and then it remotely transmits electromagnetic waves used for tracking. Voice to skull is a, is a, is a similar thing. Um, it is part of a bigger story. So it's, it falls under electronic harassment that there is somebody who's deliberately trying to sabotage your life. It's a weapon. There is somebody who's destroying you in a, in a remote way. This person isn't close by. Um, what also falls under electronic harassment is remote neural monitoring, which is the same concept as an RFID chip. But somebody else, um, without your knowledge or without you knowing or without you being aware, basically has got an access or they track you being tracked or you being monitored. Um, what most victims begin to notice is that Besides just hearing the voices, there's, they also notice that they're being followed or they're being stalked or that these perpetrators seem to know or see exactly what it is that they can see. So that, that becomes a very obvious sign that wherever it is that they go, whatever it is that they, if they're looking through their phone, if they're reading something on their screen, that the perpetrators have a clear view and, um, of everything that they're doing. So this is called remote neural monitoring. Um, they can see everything that you're doing, same principle with, with the microchip that's implanted. You don't feel it, you don't experience it, you don't know it. Um, basically they've got, um, they've got access to your full nervous system. So all the electromagnetic activity that's taking place is being translated. Whatever it is that you see, they can see. Whatever it is that you can hear, they can hear. Um, another terminology is direct energy weapons. So most people that hear voices would also start to experience pain all over parts of the body. Um, they'll begin to feel as though their kidneys are about to explode. They will begin to be sleepy. They'll begin to have an increased heart rate as though it's a normal heart attack. So all of these things are, are, are sort of part of the attack. Besides just the direct attacks on the victim, there's also what is commonly known as organized stalking or gang stalking. Um, this is where the whole community seems to sort of be against you. And you at work, you are at home with your friends, you begin to lose some of your friends because there seems to be somebody who's deliberately spreading or doing a campaign to just derail your life and you know just do some kind of um, defamation of character. The problem with organized stalking is that you can't seem to exactly pinpoint who that person is. You can't seem to find out exactly who, who is this person and why they would do it and 
what they stand to gain out of this sort of thing. But one thing for sure is that you will notice that your life is just beginning to derail and go into all sorts of ugly directions. Um, it is character assassination. So for whatever reason, it just seems like even at church, even you know, everywhere, like your name is just being dragged into the mud. It just comes across as though everybody is against you. So all of these things are not a coincidence. They, they're working hand in hand. It's all part of a electronic harassment, organized talking. Um, and it doesn't make sense for most victims at first. There's, you know, there's, there just seems to be a lot of chaos that doesn't add up. And for the fact that you can't seem to pinpoint the motive, the, the reason why and, and who would be behind this kind of thing. Um, as for voice and skull in itself, um, the technology is so advanced that it projects realistic 3D sounds. For instance, you might be in your house, you might just be in your, in your home, you hear a uh, knocking at the door and when you go there and you try and open it, it doesn't, there's nobody there. Um, that's because all of this is done from a, from a distance. It's almost like somebody beaming these, these voices via radio, but it's crystal clear. The sounds are so, it sounds like real life. Um, again, also via remote neural monitoring, whoever is doing this, the, the person attacking you can see that you're walking up to the door and then they'll probably stop the sound. Um, so they're just pretty much playing against your, they, they're pretty much just teasing you in a way. The other thing about voice to skull is, is that it, it's such a sophisticated technology. You, you, it, it sort of, it tries to mimic your, your environment or your terrain. So if you're sitting in a room, the impression would be as though like the, the voice is coming from next door. If you're walking about in the street, it would be as though the, the the people behind you are talking and they're the ones who are gossiping. Um, the other thing that I've, that I've personally noted about voice to skull is that it's um, through your ears um, and by the nanochip, the perpetrators are able to record voices of people that are close by to you and then they create the illusion that it's, it's those people that are, that are saying those kind of whatever it is, the conversation that they're having. So you would hear voices and then you, you, you walk up to that person and say, I thought it's you who's speaking, but the person would be surprised and say, no, I, I really, it wasn't me. And, and it kind of creates this kind of doubt in your head. Okay. So it's important to know that it's, it's, it's a technology. It's very advanced. Um, it's also very secretive. A lot of us don't know, a lot of the victims don't know what it, what it is until they, they started going through this kind of experience. Um, and most of them do go through years and years and years of trying to figure out all these strange events and, and, and slowly try and piece them together. Um, it's also commonly used for gang stalking. And it's the whole aim of gang stalking is to kill you, to destroy your life, to sabotage your mind, to, to keep on planting these, these seeds of doubt in your head. Um, and as, as months, as a victim, as a new victim, as months and months and months go by and you hope that one day things will turn better. You'll, you'll just begin to realize that this is probably, you know, every day seems to be a bit of a struggle. Every day seems to be some other funny, strange event happening and it just keeps on going. Um, when, these, when these perpetrators are sort of beaming voices and stuff into your head, I mean, it's, it's to give you a false sense of reality. It's to create, it's to basically to mislead you now and also to start misleading you in a way that you... In the physical realm now, you start, you might start losing money. You might start spending money going to psychologists and trying to get help. And you might also, you know, you, you know, your life just begins to be a bit of a, a bit of a mess. You're being misled to act in a, in a way. And it's also begin, it begins to be psychologically damaging. I mean, if you're hearing stuff 24 uh, hours a day um, without getting any kind of rest, without getting a break, you know, it becomes it does begin to become a psychologically very frustrating, and you might actually become insane. You start off as as being a normal person, and it's actually one of their top goals and one of their, their number one goals is to drive you to be actually insane. Um, the other goal that they have is is to force you to live in a small box, and this small box is is doubt, it's negative thinking, it's all things that are unpleasant, all all everything which is unpleasant in your head. Fear, doubt, negative thinking, um, you going around looking the fool, you beginning to act in a crazy way, you beginning to sort of question every little thing, 
pretty much being kept in a small box where all your valuable time or all your productive time is being wasted. You can't do any, you can't actually do work now. You can't actually, um, you know, deliberately forcing you not to be able to do any kind of work, deliberately wasting your time. Even when you're trying to relax and watch TV, you can't, it's not possible because there, there are all these interruptions happening. And the other goal is, the perpetrators have is they're trying to program you or condition you to, to just do whatever it is that they want you to do now, which might be to commit a crime, which might be for you to commit suicide, which might be for you to start doubting your family, which might be anything that they try to get you to do. Um, and of course, I mean, as this goes on in Drexel for a couple of months, gonna they actually trying to deprive you of sleep. Um, it's actually one of the well-known tricks that they start playing. You notice that besides just hearing these voices, you, you know, your sleep is being interrupted. Um, and you might actually even develop cancer from all the radiation. Okay? And they set out to destroy everything that might even give you hope. So you don't get any kind of rest. Your prayers are, are disrupted. Um, you can't meditate anymore. You, you can't have anything. You can't even when you try and, and, and pick yourself up. There's no sense of self-talk. There's no sense of positive energy. I mean, it's it's part of destroying you from the inside out. Destroy everything. Okay? So, it's a campaign. It's a well-structured campaign. It's well thought out. It's it's deliberately trying to kill your, your personality. Everything that makes you a wonderful... I mean, not no one person is, is always negative all the time. Even the most pessimistic person. Um, your ability to be thinking rationally is being completely destroyed. Um... I think you might even actually start doing things that are going to self-sabotage and, and lead yourself into death. So just a quick recap. It's it's a technology. It's not well known. It's not... There's actually a, a clear-cut attempt to discredit anybody who talks about this sort of thing, to sort of spread all kinds of misinformation and say people who claim to, to suffer voice to scar are delusional or they're insane or they... They don't know what they're talking about. So it's a technology which has which mostly been kept a secret. Um, it's a crime. It's a criminal offense. It's, there's a perpetrator behind the technology trying to kill you. It's just like any other weapon, just like picking up a gun and shooting you. It's the same, it's the same effect. It's pretty much just the weapon that, that they're using. Um, and one of, one of the typical things they used to hide or try and fudge or try and do a lot of misinformation is to claim that people are crazy, is to claim that this thing doesn't exist. Um, so in the next segment, pretty much just going to go into why it's effective.